believe that neither the Prophet or the Imams possessed knowledge of Ghaibah, the unseen, with a specific meaning and special meaning within the Holy Quran for the fact that only Allah possesses the divine knowledge of the unseen. However, the Quran also mentions news of Ghaibah which, is, which has been transmitted to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad peace be upon him, and his purified family, which has been transmitted through Prophet Muhammad to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Tonight's episode is an attempt to clarify the misconceptions revolving around the concept of Ghaibah, knowledge of the unseen, in light of the Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the sixth episode of Live from Karbala with me, your host Ahmad Ali. For the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episodes, they can log into our YouTube channel uh, to view the previous episodes. In the first night, we talked about Ramadan in the Quran. The second night, we talked about Imama in the Quran. The third, intercession in the Quran. The fourth, infallibility in the Quran. And in yesterday's episode, which happens to be the fifth episode, we talked about visiting graves in the Quran. These topics were discussed with my esteemed guest, who has joined me once again in tonight's episode, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. So, welcome, as alaykum, Sayyidna. Alaykum, as alaykum, How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, as we go further into Ramadan, uh, we tend to feel less of what we used to feel in the first day and the second day. Right. We kind of, uh, you know, got used to the atmosphere of Ramadan and what goes on. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's, it's some sort of, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows that feeling within you that you don't feel the thirst or the, or the hunger no. until it's thought. So Alhamdulillah no. Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sayyidina, the past four nights, or the three nights if you will, uh, we talked about intercession, infallibility, and today we're going to talk about Ilm al -ghayb. They somewhat intertwine. Inshallah, through the discussion, um, I'm going to mention how they intertwine. Uh, but the original meaning of Ghayba in Arabic is that which has been concealed or hidden or unseen and it is with that meaning that you know through numerous verses in the Holy Quran we see that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has possessed uh, knowledge of the unseen but I would like to begin it uh, by what is meant by ghayb unseen and we do see in the Quran it says alimul ghaybi wa shahada what's the difference between ghayb and shahada أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد علم الغيب is one of those uh, controversial topics yes. again between the various schools of thought mm -hmm. everyone agrees that Allah سبحانه وتعالى possesses knowledge of the unseen علم الغيب yes no doubt about that. But the question is, who else has knowledge of the unseen? Mm -hmm. Do prophets also have knowledge of the unseen? Do our imams have knowledge of the unseen? Mm -hmm. We, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, we believe that they do. Mm -hmm. Others say that they don't. And they accuse us of ghulu, yes. of crossing the boundaries, yes. of ascribing the qualities of Allah to our imams. Mm -hmm. Since Allah is the only one that knows knowledge has knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. We're ascribing this knowledge to the Imams. So this is obviously Gulu. Gulu. Yes. First of all, before we clarify this and we prove that this is not Gulu, we're mm -hmm. not crossing boundaries, we are not attributing qualities of Allah and attributes of Allah mm -hmm. to the Imams. Na'udhu yes. Billah. Uh, yes. We, we are far from that. Let's first see what ghayb means. Yes, it's important. Alm al-ghayb, what does it mean? Yeah. And then we'll Inshallah get into the on. discussion. Inshallah. Al-ghayb is anything that is unseen. Mm -hmm. That is why uh, the disappearance of Imam al-Mahdi is called ghaybah. Ghaybah. Al al-sughra wa al-ghaybah al-kubra because he disappeared. We can no longer see him. That is why backbiting in Arabic is called ghiba. Because you're backbiting someone behind his back. He's not, not there to be seen. He disappeared mm. and you backbite him. Ghiba. He's unseen. Al Ghaib, when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of, of Ghaib, or the Prophet has knowledge of Al Ghaib, or the Imam has knowledge of Ghaib, for example, past events, they're Ghaib. 
for us they're not seen mm -hmm. future events are part of ghayb things that will happen 20 years from now this is part of alm al ghayb because it's not seen our thoughts and desires mm -hmm. to others mm -hmm. they're unseen for someone to know my desires and thoughts and inner ideas mm -hmm. that's ghayb yes. for others this is all, uh, people's uh, intentions this is all considered ghayb mm -hmm. past events future events uh, what happens in people's minds minds and hearts this is all part of alim al ghayb mm -hmm. طيب. on the contrary we mm -hmm. have another concept called shahada yes al alim al ghayb wa shahada allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses possesses knowledge of al ghayb and al shahada what is al shahada yeah al shahada comes from shuhud that which what is witnessed is completely the opposite of ghayb if ghayb is something unseen a shahada is something that is seen or felt by the senses not necessarily seen but felt by the senses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him the unseen and the seen are exactly the same the same way he has knowledge of alam al shuhud he has knowledge of alam al ghayb now um Al ghayb wa shahada, what is seen and what is not seen, is relative. Mm -hmm. For some people, this is ghayb. For others, it's shahada. Mm -hmm. Past events, for us, it's part of alam al ghayb. Yes. But for the people in the past, it's alam al shahada. shahada yes. Current events, for the people in the past, it's alam al ghayb. For us, it's alam al shahada. shahada. For me, my thoughts and my desires, this is part of alam al shahada. But for you, unless you could read bad mind, I don't know if you have those special powers. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> but if you did, that's I, something else. Otherwise, that's ghayb for you, mm -hmm. but shuhud for me. And the opposite is true. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts and ideas and feelings are shahada for you, but ghayb for me. Thus, alam al ghayb wa shahada are relative. Mm -hmm. It depends on who can see, who cannot see. Who knows, who doesn't know. Who can feel who doesn't feel. From this, we deduce and we conclude that everything for Allah is part of alam al-shahada. Mm -hmm. It's not ghayb. Because he, he's, he witnesses it. Because he witnesses everything. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. Yeah. He has knowledge of everything. Thus, nothing for him is ghayb. Mm -hmm. For us, it's ghayb. Not for him. For him, everything is shuhud. Because he sees everything, he feels everything, he has knowledge of everything. He encompasses everything. And know that Allah is all knowing of everything. Yes. These are various verses yes. in the Quran that emphasize that Allah has knowledge of everything and he encompasses everything firsthand. So then you might ask, then why do we say that Allah lahu ilmu al He has knowledge of the unseen. Huh? He has knowledge of the unseen. That unseen is for whom? For us. But for him, it's not unseen. Allah is trying to tell us that the things that are unseen for you, that you are ignorant of, past events, future events, people's uh, feelings, emotions, ideas, the things that are unseen for you, Allah knows of. So it's ghayb for us, not for him. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, we still call him alim al ghayb. So it's easy to provide evidences that God is all knowing and he is the one who possesses absolute knowledge of the unseen. Right. And uh, as, as you provided right there. But many Quranic verses make it absolutely clear that faith is one of the foundations of the belief system for Muslims. And from that, we derive one of the Quranic terms that particularly captures this fact is ghayb. And we see in the Quran that it's mentioned, the word ghayb is mentioned 49 times in 48 verses. And from that, the majority of the verses state that only Allah has divine knowledge. And we've concluded that only Allah has divine knowledge. But on the contrary, other verses state that no, prophets also have knowledge of the unseen divine knowledge. So I would like to quote this uh, verse that says, 
with him are the keys of ghayb. None knows but he. This is in chapter 6, verse 59. So it's only him that knows what's going to happen in the future or everything that goes on. So is Allah the only one that has divine knowledge, knowledge of the unseen, or can prophets also possess this knowledge? The Quran um, gives us a message mm -hmm. that Ilm al Ghayb is his realm, Allah's realm, mm -hmm. that no one possesses Ilm al Ghayb. Mm -hmm. This is something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses mm -hmm. innately. No one has the ability to know the unseen and have knowledge of the unseen Except. other than Him. Mm -hmm. Say that no one in the skies and in the earth has knowledge of the unseen except, except Allah. He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows it except him. Mm -hmm. Say that the knowledge of the unseen or the unseen is only for Allah SWT. However, these verses, what they're, they're, what they're trying to mean is that the only one that could reach the knowledge of, of the unseen mm -hmm. is Allah SWT, innately, without the help of anyone, mm -hmm. independently. Yes. The only one can have the knowledge of the unseen independently and without his without assistance, is Allah. without the help of anyone, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This doesn't negate the fact that others can have ilm al ghayb but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they conflict each other. Here it, they're saying no one has. Huh. We'll see other verses that says some people do have ilm al ghayb mm -hmm. but by assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given them. Mm -hmm. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَدَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَمِيزَ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَطْلَعَكُمْ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ And Allah would not expose you to the unseen. Mm -hmm. وَلَكِنْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَشْتَبِي مِنْ رَسُولِهِ مَنْ يَشَعْ However, Allah chooses some people and He exposes them to the unseen. Same as intercession we can say. أحسنت. Intercession is for Allah SWT yet He allows some people to have intercession. Mm -hmm. Same exact philosophy. Alm al ghayb is only for Allah, yet He gives He gives some of this knowledge to some people who feel they are worthy. Mm -hmm. Th this verse is very clear. Alim al ghaybi, fala yudhiru ala ghaybihi ahada illa. He makes an exception. He is the knower of the unseen, and He will not give His knowledge to others. No except. one except illa, illa man yartala man rasul. Except who he has accepted from the messengers. Some people, he will give them that knowledge. This means mm -hmm. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the possessor of, mm -hmm. of alm al-ghayb. No doubt about it. No one competes with him. No one competes with him. He is the possessor of alm al-ghayb. And if some prophets, they have alm al-ghayb, it's from him. Because he, he poured onto them some of that knowledge. I would like to mention something you just mentioned. Only accept those that he chosen from his messengers? So not all messengers or all messengers? No. It, it doesn't say all messengers. Illa mm -hmm. Men, uh, this is, uh, accept some of his prophets. Illa uh, It doesn't mean all of, their, all of his prophets. Mm -hmm. Some of his prophets. So not some of his prophets. messengers. Of course, it means a messenger, but it doesn't necessarily mean a prophet. Mm -hmm. An imam could be considered a messenger, not a prophet in the sense that we know. Just like when you send a messenger, just like Muslim ibn Aqil was the messenger of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Don't we call him a messenger? Yes. So this title of messenger, it doesn't necessarily mean a prophet. It could be others as well. Mm -hmm. And we shall, we shall see later on. Inshallah. That some people other than prophets also have the ability of the unseen to know the unseen. Now I want to give a couple of examples of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives knowledge of the unseen to others. We have various examples. We have lots of examples. For example, Ghulibatur Rum fi Adna al Arth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet that the Romans have been victorious in their battle against 
the Persian Empire. في أدنى الأرض وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون في بضع السنين. There will be another victory in the coming years. But this is Allah telling the Prophet. Yes, that's what we mean. When we say that some prophets have knowledge of the unseen, it's all from Allah. It's all from Allah. It's not that the prophet is competing with Allah. Allah has knowledge, and the prophet has knowledge okay. from a different source. Mm -hmm. The source of not the knowledge of the prophet mm -hmm. or the imams is all from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So they're in the same line. In the same line. They're in the same line. They're not competing. Uh, but the thing is, we see in the Quran also mentioned with Khudr. Khudr, we don't consider him as a prophet. No. He's just, you know, a pious servant of Allah yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet, he knew unseen knowledge yes. that Moses didn't know. Yes, absolutely. So, did Allah tell him? How did he get the Yes, knowledge? from Allah. But absolutely. he's not a prophet. He's not a prophet. You don't have to be a prophet to receive knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. um, in Surah, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Naam. In the story of Musa, mm -hmm. Allah SWT tells the mother of Musa, وَأُوحَيْنَا أَلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضَعِيهِ فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِ Breastfeed him, and if you fear for him, put him in a box, put him in the river. وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Don't be afraid, don't fear for him. إِنَّا رَدُّهُ إِلَيْكِ We will return him back to you. Allah is giving her knowledge of the, of the future. Mm -hmm. This is علم الغيب. This is knowledge of the unseen. Umm Musa. Umm Musa is not a prophet, not a messenger, not an imam. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to necessarily be an imam. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be a prophet or a messenger to receive knowledge of the unseen mm -hmm. from Allah Azza wa And Khidr, absolutely, his knowledge was from Allah. The Quran says, Musa told him, and to alimani mimma ulimta rujda. I want to, mm. I want to follow you so that you teach me from what you've been taught. You've been taught by whom? Mm -hmm. By Allah. History doesn't tell us that Al Khidr sat in a classroom at a university or he was taught by someone else. He was taught by Allah Azza wa Luqman, Luqman atainahu al hikmah. He received wisdom from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Thus, Al Mil Ghayb, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grants it to some people. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very much possible. And it's very much in line with the Quran. There's no contradiction whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to mention as well we human, can we possess Al Mil Ghayb? I mean, from the narrations that we receive, uh, what's going to happen in the future and, you know, prior to uh, the appearance of the Imam, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Yes. And the some Quran. stuff did happen. So are we considered also people that who... who yes, to some degree. Naam. To some degree, the prophets, uh, the Imams, who have been... Of course, we have to prove this, which is the yes. next step. Who have been given some knowledge of... The, and this is a controversial topic. Have the Imams been given all knowledge of Alm al Ghayb or some knowledge of Alm mm -hmm. al Ghayb? This is a controversial topic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Imams told, taught their companions from the knowledge that they, they were taught. So, yes, mm -hmm. some humans who are not even infallible can have Alm al Ghayb not innately, not independently, but from the, the, the possessor of Alm al Ghayb. Inshallah. We'll continue the discussion after the break, Sayyidina, if you will. Absolutely. So, respected viewers, uh, do stay tuned uh, after the break uh, because inshallah we're going to provide some precise examples from the Quran that prove uh, the prophets and the imams possess and ghayb so that's after the break stay tuned
perspective viewers welcome back hope you inshallah enjoyed uh, those live footages from inside the holy shrine of imam al hussein alayhi salam uh, once again it is actually a blessing uh, to view uh, such footages uh, from inside the holiest place on this planet the holy shrine of imam hussein alayhi salam so do take that opportunity to send your blessings your salutations and your salams upon our master imam al hussein alayhi salam but back to the discussion with my dear guest uh, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Before the break, we talked about knowledge of the unseen and how Allah alone has knowledge but yet bestows His knowledge uh, upon uh, His apostles and messengers. Welcome back, Habib Sayyidina. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so, we can, we can conclude from the first part of the episode that it's safe to say that Allah has absolute knowledge of the unseen but yet He has given that knowledge to some of his prophets or to his prophets right so it's confusing what's the difference between Allah and the prophets then if they both have knowledge the difference we can we can we can mention several differences mm -hmm. but I'll mention two one of the main differences mm -hmm. is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of the unseen independently innately from his own nature he doesn't need the help and assistance of others. Mm -hmm. While the prophets, if we agree that all prophets had alm al ghayb they are in need of Allah's assistance. They are in need of Him. This is a crucial point. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has alm al ghayb from Him, from Himself. He doesn't need anyone's assistance. Independently, while the prophets, they have knowledge of the unseen dependently. This is a big, big difference. And... This doesn't just, uh, this is not just restricted to Alm al Ghayb. Several qualities. Uh, they're natural to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah bestows it upon others as well. So Allah has these qualities independently, while prophets, imams, or others, they have those qualities too, but dependently, depending on Him. For example, we mentioned some of these examples before mm -hmm. uh, death and taking away life. This is a quality that Allah SWT has independently. Allahu yatawaffal anfus hina mawtiha. Allah has that capability of taking people's lives. However, Allah can give this ability mm -hmm. to others. But for that, He didn't say that I am the only one that takes lives. He just said yatawaffal anfus hina mawtiha. Right. But in here, it says only Allah has absolute knowledge. That's fine. He has absolute knowledge independently. He's the only one that does not need assistance. He doesn't need a source. Mm -hmm. Allah's knowledge is innate. Mm -hmm. The Prophet's knowledge has a source. He needs to have a source. Mm -hmm. Allah doesn't need to have a source. Mm -hmm. So this is what Allah is trying to say, is that the difference between me and you is that I possess all the knowledge and I don't need assistance, but the knowledge that you have, it's from me. I gave it to you. It's a big difference. Huge difference. Same thing goes for recording people's actions. Wallahu yaktubu ma yubayyitun. And another verse, Bala wa rusulana ladayhim yaktubu. Allah says, I record. And another verse says, My angels record. Allah has given them th that ability. So we could say this is one of the primary differences is that Allah. His knowledge is independent while mm -hmm. their knowledge is dependent. This is one. Mm -hmm. Two, another big difference. Of course, this is a bit uh, controversial, but my understanding of the verses and of the Quran and is that Allah's knowledge of the unseen is unconditional. Unconditional. Which means? Full knowledge. Mm -hmm. Not restricted. While the knowledge of the messengers is limited. They only know that which Allah gives them. Only that which Allah gives them. They don't have knowledge of everything. They have knowledge of the unseen, but not of everything. That is why the Quran says, uh, They ask you about the Day of Judgment. Say that my only... They ask Rasulullah. Huh. Mm -hmm. When they ask you about the Day of Judgment, tell them that only Allah has knowledge of the Day of Judgment. So the prophet, prophets, imams, others who have knowledge of the unseen, it doesn't mean that their knowledge is unconditional. 
It's as vast as the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's knowledge of the unseen is unconditional. He knows every single thing. While prophets and imams, they have knowledge according to what Allah has given them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they know everything. Mm -hmm. So this is a difference. Allah's knowledge is not limited, while the knowledge of the prophets is limited. Mm -hmm. Limited according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. Mm -hmm. And there's a very big difference it between is, yeah. the two. Yeah, there is. And how do you think the knowledge is, tra is transmitted? Through revelation, through, you know, dreams, through... You know, Various ways. It could, it could be through revelations. It could be through inspiration. Mm -hmm. Revelation, al-wahi. Mm -hmm, yes. Through revelation. It could be through ilham, inspiration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts, puts that knowledge in his, in his, in his heart. It could be through dreams. could be many ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, gives not, communicates knowledge mm -hmm. to others, whether they're prophets or, or non-prophets mm -hmm. or even animals. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even communicates with, with ants. Yes. So, good. We put that aside. Good thing that we uh, cleared up uh, the confusion right there. Uh, but another confusion rises that revolves around this topic which is that some people state that Ahlul Bayt possess knowledge or possess this type of knowledge of the unseen yes do we Shia believe in that ideology and what are the Quranic evidences we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given knowledge of the unseen mm -hmm. to the Ahlul Bayt some of our scholars believe that their knowledge is very vast mm -hmm. others believe that it's not as vast, it's limited. Mm -hmm. we, yes. But that goes back to Ghulu because some people state that they have absolute knowledge. Ah. First of all, I, I personally lean towards that the knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt is very vast, but not as vast as the knowledge of Allah. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's very vast. More than the Prophets? No. Uh, yes, to some degrees, more than other Prophets except Khatab al Anbiya and Muhammad. Muhammad their knowledge is not more than Khatam al Anbiya mm -hmm. Muhammad. But their knowledge could be more than uh, you know, more than some other prophets. And I'll prove that in a minute. Inshallah. Quranic or Quranically. Mm -hmm. All we have is the Quran. Really? We could mention narrations, but I want to stick to the Quran. Yes. Because when we have the narrations Quran narrations are assertions as I look at them. Yeah. Well but th they're not hundred percent. It depends. Do you believe in them or not? If you're yes. a father of Ahl Bayt, you'll believe in them. Yes. If you're not a follower of Ahl Bayt, mm. you will come and question me on their mm. authenticity. So let's stick to the Quran so that even followers of Ahl Bayt they can't question the Quran. Traditions are based on the Quran. Are and they, they explain the Quran as well. Exactly. So it's a good way of explaining what the Quran says. Ahsent. I will attempt now to prove that the Ahlul Bayt have mm -hmm. knowledge of Ulm al Ghayb. Hissa, how vast is it? That's another story. Let's mm -hmm. put this aside. aside. Okay. But they have some knowledge of Ulm al Ghayb. Mm -hmm. Is it 100%? Is it 90%? Is it 80%? That will require another discussion. But to, just to prove that they have knowledge. And it's a, a lot of knowledge. But is it equated to the knowledge of Allah or not? That's another story. The verse says. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتْحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ That everything, the knowledge of the skies, the earth, uh, what is wet, what is dry, uh, even the seeds uh, Even the seeds Even a leaf of a tree Everything That knowledge is put in where? Illa fi Kitab, kitab. In a book In a book There's right. a book mm -hmm. That book is not a, a physical book It's, it's a, not? It's a no It's a figurative mm -hmm. It's a figurative uh, You know It's a figurative way mm -hmm. There's no literally a, a, you know, a book that, that has a... No, there's something called the book. What's that based on? I mean, that, that, that assertion, what is it based on? That, that it's, it's not a physical book. Because, you know, that book sometimes 
it's, it's changed. Yamhullah ma yasha wa yuthbit wa andahu umm al kitab. There are some things that are erased, that are put back in that book. I mean, I don't think it's it's a you it's, know yeah. a physical book that it's erased and then you, they write on. No, it's something. Maybe it's beyond our comprehension, but it's something that has knowledge, mm -hmm. something that is stored. Yes. That has knowledge of all these things, which is ghayb, stored in that book. And so if you want to say it's physical, physical. No, we don't have a problem with that. Okay. Whether it's figurative or physical. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. We have another verse that says, La yamassuhu, la yamassuhu. What? No one touches it. No one touches what? Al-Kitab. Mm -hmm. Al-Kitab. La yamassuhu, illa al-mutahharun. No one touches it except the purified ones. Who are the purified ones? Who are the purifi purified ones? Refer to our discussion on infallibility. Yes, two days ago. Two days ago when we talked about the verse, إِنَّمَا يُرُودُ اللَّهِ يُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الْرِسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَاهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِرَ So it's the Ahl al-Bayt that are purified. And we proved this in a previous discussion. That the Ahl al-Bayt are purified. لا يمسه No one can touch it except the purified ones. And we proved that the purified ones are the Ahl al-Bayt. Touch it. Physically? Again, again, this is not physically. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, anyone can touch the book. Anyone can touch yeah, the book. Yeah, we touch the book. <laughs> Some, they take it literally. Yeah. They try to make a fiqhi law of it that you cannot touch the book unless, unless you have wudu. So this is one meaning. Yeah. This is one literal meaning. Another meaning, the ta'wil of the verse, is that you cannot touch it with your minds, not with your hands. So. You they cannot understand it? You cannot understand it. لا يمسه إلا المطهرون You cannot touch it unless you're from the purified ones. Mm -hmm. That means if you're from the purified ones, you can understand it and have knowledge of it. طيب? You have knowledge of it. What did the, ver the previous verse says? وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ لا يمسه إلا المطهرون Why these riddles? So everything, it's not a riddle. Everything is in the book. No one can touch the book except the purified ones. Meaning the purified ones, they have knowledge of the book. And since everything is stored in the book, that means the Ahlul Bayt have everything that is stored in the book, which is the knowledge of the answer. But why? I mean, verses sometimes be, are, are confusing or conflicting with each other. Nah. Why not be clear? Allah wants people to think. He doesn't want to give you know everything one two three mm -hmm. that's the whole test do they not ponder and think and contemplate over the quran this is this is a tadabbar looking at the verses and bringing them t together mm -hmm. to make sense now if this seems like a riddle come with me to the other verse okay have we agreed Hopefully it's more convincing it'll be more convincing inshallah have we agreed that all the knowledge is in, stored in the book yes ولا رطب ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين طيب another verse says قل كفى بالله شهيدا بيني وبينكم ومن عنده علم الكتاب say to them O Prophet يا رسول الله say to the Christians and Jews that if you don't believe me it's enough that I have two witnesses that I'm telling the truth if you Christians and Jews you don't believe me I have two witnesses, and that's enough for me. Allah is my witness. Woman عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ The one who possesses knowledge of the book. Mm -hmm. Who possesses knowledge of the book during the days of Rasulullah. Who, out of all of the Sahaba, if it's not Rasulullah, who? out of everyone else, who would have knowledge of the book? Other than Ali ibn Abi Talib. There's no doubt about it. Woman عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Mm -hmm. He is the possessor of the knowledge of the book Al Kitab. He has knowledge of the book mm -hmm. regarding the successor of uh, Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman, mm -hmm. Asaf ibn Balkhia. Yes. He had Alm min al Kitab. He had knowledge of some of the book. Mm -hmm. See this also proves my point that that book was not a, a, physical, a book physical book because it was during the days of Sulaiman, during the days of Rasulullah. It's not a physical book. It's, it's figurative. 
It's something that stores all the knowledge. That successor of Sulaiman had some of the knowledge. Is that called? Ali ibn Abi Talib has all of the knowledge all of the, the book. Knowledge. Is that called uh, an ism al azam or is that something different? That's part of it. That's part of Alm al Kitab. That's part. That's part of Alm al Kitab. It's not, it's not all. Mm -hmm. When we say Alm al Kitab, everything that is stored in that, in that book, he has knowledge of everything that is stored in that book. Any leaf that falls on the ground is in that book. A seed in the darkness of the earth. Imam Ali possessed knowledge of the book. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge and the book has knowledge of everything. What does That's that make perfect. Ali ibn Abi yes. And if we prove that Ali ibn Abi Talib has knowledge of the unseen, why can't the rest of the Imams? Definitely. Why can't the rest of the Imams have? Mm -hmm. And they were his heirs. Yes. Not just in money. Ali ibn Abi Talib did not leave money. Yeah. He left wisdom and knowledge. It's enough for us to prove that Ali ibn Abi Talib had knowledge of the unseen. It's enough. It's enough. Because the others, they say that no humans can have knowledge of the unseen. The golden chain. The golden. If we prove that Ali ibn Abi Talib did, that's enough. Perfect. Is that convincing? Is it not convincing? It's, it's, it's convincing for us. Hopefully it's convincing for, uh, for the others as well. Uh, but since we did mention that, something else uh, raises when we see in the Quran uh, that states, I do not have knowledge of the unseen. Some prophets say that. What about those prophets? Doesn't that conflict uh, with our beliefs as Shia that the Prophet and the Imams did have this type of knowledge when we do see prophets saying, I don't have knowledge of the unseen? Right. There's a couple of verses in the Quran mm -hmm. in which Allah tells the Prophet to tell the people that I do not have knowledge of Alm al Ghayb. Mm -hmm. I don't have knowledge of the unseen. Alm al Ghayb. Say, say to them that I don't have knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. Tell them that I can't benefit myself nor harm, my, harm myself. And if I had knowledge of the unseen, I would have done more good things. And bad things would not happen to me if I had knowledge of the unseen. That's Prophet Muhammad? Yes. In another verse, Say to them that I do not have uh, knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. It's true that the, Allah SWT is telling him, say to them, I do not have knowledge of the unseen. However, this doesn't literally mean that Rasulullah SAW did not have knowledge of the unseen. Rather, Rather, Allah wants Rasulullah to make a point yes. that I do not have... Huh, see, let me, let me make this point. Mm -hmm. That some people thought that being a prophet automatically meant you have to have supernatural yes, powers. powers and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Tell them, no, no, it's not like that. I'm a messenger of Allah. I'm a messenger of Allah. I don't necessarily need to have knowledge of the unseen. I'm a normal person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he declared himself a prophet, when he told people that I'm a prophet, they told him, do this for us, do that for us, yeah. bring a rock, bring a this. Moses. Moses. Uh, we want supernatural powers. Allah is telling him, tell them that I'm not claiming I have supernatural powers. Yeah. Being a prophet doesn't mean I'm Superman. <laughs> it yeah. means that I'm delivering a message to you from Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala. That's all that it means. Tell them that I don't necessarily need to have Alm al Ghayb, yeah. even though he does. Even though he does. So, what's the purpose of saying it? It means that yeah, you should believe in me even if I don't have Alm al Ghayb. Because I'm telling the truth. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I'm delivering a message. Even if I don't have Alm al Ghayb, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that I'm not a prophet. Yes. I'm still a prophet. Yeah. Even though Rasulullah did have Alm al Ghayb. This is one. Two, or it could mean that tell them you don't have Alm al Ghayb independently. You're not competing with Allah. That Allah has Alm al Ghayb and you also have Alm al Ghayb. Tell them that anything that you have, it's from Allah. Yes. 
proof of that, proof of this analysis, is that Rasulullah sometimes he would tell them about the future. So how could he say, And sometimes he would tell them about the future. Mm -hmm. This means that when he would tell them about the future, he was telling them about the future from Allah, saying that my source is Allah. Otherwise, independently, I don't have knowledge of the future. I don't have knowledge of that too. So these verses are trying to say, tell them, Ya Rasulullah, that you do not have independent knowledge of the unseen. Whatever you have, it's from us. That's the point. This is how I understand these verses. And it's somewhat convincing because, I mean, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is destined to, to happen, it happens, but we do see that the Prophet, as you mentioned, wants people to follow him. You know, either he does or does not have... A, Absolute knowledge right. of, of the unseen. So either he, when he says uh, either I don't have absolute knowledge of the ghayb, Maybe, of yes. everything, yes. unconditional knowledge, or that I don't have independent knowledge. Mm -hmm. yes. Independent knowledge is with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa uh, if we can briefly, I think we have a, a minute or two uh, to talk about, uh, we have one minute left, uh, briefly. Uh, if Ahlul Bayt do have divine knowledge and we just proven that they do not understand it except the purified did they know about their deaths when the majority of them were poisoned and killed I mean the, how, how we you believe know? that the Ahlul Bayt knew about their fates mm -hmm. they knew about their deaths however why didn't they do anything about it mm -hmm. is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's true that Allah has given them knowledge but they had to act according to their apparent knowledge, not their inner knowledge. You know, sometimes when you have a friend, you know this person's a hypocrite deep down inside. But you don't want to tell him in his face. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, you act normal. You know, you, you act like he's your friend. Even though deep down inside, you know that he's a hypocrite. hypocrite. You don't judge him based upon his hypocrisy. You judge him based upon his friendship. You do that. Mm -hmm. You don't act upon what's real. You act upon what's apparent. Ahlul Bayt, this is how they were. Even the Prophet, some, the Prophet, he knew some people were hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Yet he didn't treat them as hypocrites. But is it not walking towards suicide? When, when you, sorry, is it not suicide because you're walking into death? No. No, it's, uh, it's acting according to the commands of Allah mm -hmm. Allah SWT tells them that do not make use of your inner knowledge, of the knowledge that you have. Live with the necessary? people, live with the people apparently. Mm -hmm. Live with the people apparently. When Imam Ali alayhi salam went inside the masjid, Masjid al Kufa, he saw Abdul Rahman ibn Muljah. He woke him up for salah, not as his killer, but as, you know, a apparently he was there for what? Mosque, yes. He was to there pray. to pray, so he woke him up as a person who was there to pray. Because if the Imams wanted to act on their inner knowledge, on their deep knowledge, then things would have been different. Things would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. So they acted, you know, on their apparent knowledge. Hopefully, uh, the evidences you provided are uh, convincing uh, to everyone. Alhamdulillah, they, they, they are convincing because uh, if we don't take traditions, we have to take the Quran, which is 100%. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight, Sayyidina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you My for your pleasure. dedication to Ahl Bayt, Ali salam. Respect for viewers. Thank you very much for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestow upon us not absolute divine knowledge, but at least the understanding of Ahl Bayt, Ali salam. So stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.